Well, we can we can talk a little bit about that this morning, actually. Um, so so uh, let me mute everyone and let's begin. And then uh, I'm going to come around and, and check in with everybody as we usually do um, to find out how you're all doing. And uh, let me just take the doorbell off so we don't get interrupted with that. There we go. All right. So, um, as I overheard a little bit of that uh, about um, how you're, you know, being asked how you are, how you're doing, how you're feeling, and what do you respond? And um, I know Steve was saying that, uh, you know, as you answer, even if it's not true, so uh, or even if it's true rather, so if somebody says how are you, and you say, oh, I'm not great what you're doing in that moment is you're focusing on the fact that you're not great. And, and if you're not great, you're not great. But what you can do if you want to is say, I'm great, even though you're not great. Because, but as you do that, imagine what it would be like if you were feeling great. So in other words, tune into that superpower, feel that feeling of your heart opening and decide to be great. So when someone asks you how you're doing or how you are, um, and, and of course, I'm not including here because here is where we do want you to tell us how you're doing, how you're feeling, because that's why we're here. So this, you know, when we ask you how you're doing, we, we do mean how are you genuinely doing right now so that we can help you. But as you go about your life, when someone asks you, how are you or how are you doing? Take that, in, take that to mean, how do I want to feel? How do I want to be doing? So in other words, as they say, how are you or how are you doing or how are you feeling? Interpret it in your mind. You choose to, to interpret it as, so how would you like to be feeling? And answer that question. And as you answer that question, choose that state, even if you can't feel it yet. Because, so here's something that's, that, that, that describes this really well. If you're driving somewhere, so you've got your hands on the, on the steering wheel and you're going in that direction. Now, if you want to turn right, you, you, you're not facing right yet. Okay, so you have to make the decision, I'm going to turn the wheel to turn right, even though I can't see what's on the right yet. You know what I mean? So that's what we're doing with our focus and our emotional state all the time. We are facing a particular direction and which means we're feeling a particular or we're, we're seeing something in a particular way. Now, in order to see something differently or feel differently or experience something differently, we have to, while we're still feeling the, the not nice stuff, we have to make the decision first. I'm going to turn right. I'm going to feel good. And then we change our emotional state by changing our focus. So the equivalent of that is, so you're driving along the road and you come, you, there's a roadblock ahead. Now, if you just carry on and sit at the roadblock and go, well, I don't know what to do because there's this roadblock and somebody says, how are you doing? You go, well, I'm sitting in front of a roadblock. Then, you know, that's one option. That's okay. But, or you could go, you know what, I'm going to turn right here so that I don't have to sit in the roadblocks. I can go in a different direction. And the equivalent of that is you're, you're feeling not nice. You're feeling whatever you're feeling. And, some, and, and someone says how you're doing, or you just notice you're not feeling so well. Now you can continue feeling not nice. And that's okay. That's your, that's your prerogative. But it's important to know that you have the power to turn right. So you have the power to go, okay, so I'm not feeling nice, nice right now. How do I want to feel? I want to feel good. So I'm going to now look at something good. I'm going to think of something good. I'm going to focus on something good. I'm going to turn that wheel. And sometimes, although there's absolutely no physical uh, effort involved, sometimes it can feel like an effort. It feels like an emotional effort, especially if you, you know, if the, the, the not nice feelings are very strong. So it's a little bit of an effort to turn that wheel, but you can turn it. Yeah. So if, if you are feeling uh, upset, worried, angry, frustrated, 
despondent, hopeless, sad, whatever those negative feelings are, it can feel like a really heavy wheel to turn, but it can be turned and only you can turn it because you're the only one driving. There is no one else driving. So only you can go, you know what? I feel really awful, but what is one thing I can do right now to, to change my focus, to turn my head, to turn the wheel? So for example, I can watch a funny YouTube video. I can listen to music. And if that doesn't work, I can think of five things to be grateful for. And if that doesn't work, I can do an activity I love. And if that doesn't work, I can watch a movie. And if that doesn't work, I can play a game. And you just keep going. So you just keep turning that wheel until there's a road that that is clear. So you turn right and there's a roadblock and you turn another way and there's a roadblock and you keep going until you find a way through. Does that does that make sense? I'm going to unmute you because I know this was this was your conversation, uh, Bogoslava. So I want to hear what you because uh, you know and feel free to to say what you know what resistance is there or anything because this is helping everybody else as well. Okay, uh, when you explanation is awesome. I understand what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Whatever you were saying already, I feel like no. Okay. I can't feel good because I feel bad. And I know that from the past. And even when you were saying, I feel that resistance and I feel my stomach, like my center body area. And the other thing is when I am at work, I have no choice. I have to work and I feel angry and I feel bad or whatever happened if maybe from beginning, maybe this start at work. So what can I do? I have to work. I have to be nice to people and I, I have no choice. I cannot watch movie. I cannot go for work. I have no choices, just work. And I don't okay. know, just pretend I'm happy, which I'm frustrated yes That's and right. that makes it worse when you have to pretend to be happy when you're not yeah. and so i completely get that uh, i i completely get that and so here's the here's so there's two things number one there's a choice and number two i'm going to tell you what the options are so first of all the choice is the first choice is continue to be in that situation so continue to experience that and feel frustrated in that and the and the other option is to override and and make a choice anyway and here's how you do that even if you don't have a choice of what you're doing so you're at work and so you're stuck and and you know there's nothing you can do about that and you're working with people so you have to be you have to put on a face a, a happy face and deal with those people and that's true <clears throat> what makes the difference is how you are seeing that. So one option, and I, and I really do understand this, I know it well, I'm very familiar with it. One option is to feel stuck, trapped, I'm in the situation and think about all the things that you can't do and the fact that you, you're there and you don't have a choice and you have to pretend to be fine with all these people. That's one option. The other option is to take the wheel take it off automatic and go, instead of seeing it like that, I am going to choose to think of my favorite color. Even while I'm dealing with these people, I'm going to think of my favorite color. I'm going to sing a song in my head. I'm going to think about how grateful I am that I'm not out of work. I'm going to think of how grateful I am. It's not what I want. It's not what I really want, but it's better than not having. So I'm going to think about my touchstone, you know, so in the future, a moment that will show you the, a moment that will happen when you have what you want, a high five, a yes, I did it to say that in your mind, regardless of what you're feeling. In other words, you know, it's that same thing of until you turn the wheel, you're still facing the direction you don't want to be going but you do have to turn the wheel even while you're facing in the direction you don't want to be going so that you can face the way. So you turn the wheel first before you see what you want to, where you want to go. And then you see where you want to go. So you make that decision in your head and you say the words first and then the feelings will come. That's number one. Number two, the superpower exercise. Absolutely use that. So before you go to work, 
you know, when you wake up in the morning, pre-pave, pre-pave your work before you go. Send, get into the superpower state, send love to your work, send love to you at work. Imagine yourself at work, fill that version of you with that love, that light, that you know, love just for existing, that energy. Imagine that love and light overflowing from you at work and filling the whole place where you work and all the people in it, no matter what, and all the people you have to deal with, fill them with that power. Now, you won't feel like doing it. And the reason you won't feel like doing it is because it'll take you too far from, from where you've been, right? And that's, that's okay. And it's the same as when you're doing new physical exercise. I don't know if you've ever tried stretching. It's horrendous. <laughs> I mean, you know, it hurt, it, it's, it's not comfortable. Yeah. But it's not comfortable and it's not comfortable until you've stretched, if you know what I mean. So the stretching feels uncomfortable, but the more you do it, just gently, gently, until it's comfortable, then you're more supple suddenly. Then those muscles are looser and more flexible, but they don't just become more flexible without the, the pulling, without the stretching. Yeah. You don't get stronger by with lifting weights without feeling that pain feeling that, that pressure, that pain, that thing. And so keep reminding yourself that that's what this is. So I don't feel like doing the superpower exercise, but then remind yourself it takes very little time and I can do it while I'm doing other things, while I'm brushing my teeth, while I'm making a cup of coffee, while I'm going to the loo. It doesn't take any physical effort at all. So it's not like jogging. You know, I mean, it really doesn't take any physical effort. So any resistance you feel, you can recognize as that stretching, that pulling up the weights and treat it like that and treat it like this resistance. This is good. Resistance is a great sign. It's good. It means that you are moving forward because you're, you're now getting to that stage where it's difficult. It's stretching. So you're getting beyond the comfort zone and changes are being made. So pre-pave your work, do the superpower exercise all the time, as much as you've been doing it for a while now. So you, you, you have the ability. Now it's just a case of overriding that resistance. So feel the resistance and then do it anyway. So, you know, one of the things that I used very successfully that, that helped a lot for me and that I teach now is love the resistance. Whatever comes up, love that. And if you can't feel the love, that's okay. Just make the decision. Just decide to you know, turn that wheel. You can't see it yet, but turn the wheel anyway. So, you know, oh, I don't feel like doing it. I love the fact that I don't feel like doing it. I love the fact that I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> just, just amuse yourself with it in that way. Oh, well, you know, I have to go. To, yeah, I love the fact that I have to go to work. Even though you don't, just say it anyway. And you'll notice your chemical state will start to change. So pre, uh, make that decision to do it, pre-pave. And then while you're at work, practice bringing up that feeling while you're at work, just as a, like, you're, like you're lifting weights, just practice that feeling of your heart opening, even if you can't feel the love, just like a physical exercise practice, opening your heart, even while you're pretending to be happy to someone. So treat your, treat that situation you don't want. And I'm saying this for everyone because you, you're not the only one. Uh, you know, all of us get into situations where when we don't want to be there, we have to be there or we don't want to do it. We have to do it. Um, treat those as target practice treat those as weights that you're lifting to make you stronger and stronger. And you will be, you will absolutely amaze yourself with what you experience. It's a funny thing because I don't know if it's funny. Um, when I was practicing like every day with you guys and on my own, I was changing memories and I practicing the superpower. I was feeling stronger and stronger, like you said. And Friday, I couldn't be here with you. Yes. I didn't do much. Saturday, I didn't feel I was okay. Sunday, the same. And, and this, I start to feel like I'm losing yes. completely the feeling. And it's just a few days, which I practiced, but not much as before. Right. So how does that work? I'm losing so fast and it's so hard to get back to this yeah. state. 
Yeah. And so what it's like is if you imagine you, uh, and again, it's the same with physical exercise and any skill. So if you had spent a week practicing um, an instrument, practicing scales on the piano or jogging or something like that. And then uh, let's say you spent four days doing that. And then on the, you know, on the Friday and the Saturday and Sunday, you didn't feel like doing it much. So you didn't do much by Monday. You're going to be very stiff and you're not going to feel like doing it because your body hasn't had time to completely assimilate the changes. Now, if you'd been running five days a week or three days a week or whatever it is for a month or for two months, by then, you know, in fact, I think it's three months that they say by the time physically, um, you know, by the time your body builds that stamina and then it's easy to run, you know, for however long, then you get, you know, you take some time off because you're on holiday or you're not well or whatever, you come back to it you'll still need to build it up again, but not from as far back. But it's, it's the same thing. So if you, 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 your brain and body have been producing these, you've been practicing the skill and think of it as a muscle and you've been practicing the skill of producing those feel good chemicals and practicing where you're putting your fo choosing your focus. Now you spend three days of a little bit, but not much. And then, when you say not much, what else were you doing in that time? Where else was your focus? So was your focus perhaps on things you were concerned about or worried about or feeling not so good? Remember that that is, that's not just not doing it, that's doing the opposite, right? So instead of feel good chemicals, now you're producing stress chemicals. Now it's going to take a little while to get back mm -hmm. into, especially when you consider stress chemicals are stronger. Does that help to explain it? Yes. yes. Very Absolutely. good. Thank you. Good job. Well done, Bogislav. And thank you for sharing that because I know it's going to help others as well. And we're so happy to have you back. Well, Please don't go away again. I just <laughs> couldn't. I had meeting from work. So it was I the understand. same time, 11 o'clock. So I just couldn't. Of course. I understand. And then remember that also for everybody, when you can't make it uh, uh, live or you miss a day, as soon as you can, go and watch the recording and if the recording is not up from that day watch a previous one because whatever you do is going to help you know we still go through the exercise in all of them so you could go back to any of them watch it and just go through the exercise as you you know as you would if you were here because that will help you to stay on track as well all right That's good Thank good you. job you're very welcome and so katrina let's check in with you how are you doing today Yes, I'm good. I wanted to report in um, about uh, my new relationship with my mum. Oh, this. yes. Okay. And um, first of all, I want to say that I love the way you say my name. Oh, <laughs> really? You said very different to other people and it's lovely. Oh, <laughs> good. Right. Now there's a page, I'm not going to read out this page, but um, I just want um, to say out loud, the little girl in me, how she feels about her mum. Yes. So um, here's how I feel about my mum, my mommy, I was calling her now. The little Katrina now says, I love my mommy and my mommy loves me. And... Um, I'm so like my mommy, and I love being like my mommy. Very I, yeah, no, I just love my mommy. This is, <laughs> this is just so empowering. Thank you for guiding me back to my mommy. <laughs> ah, I am so thrilled to hear that, Katrina. Well done. Everybody's clapping. Oh, well done, sweetheart. That is just amazing. That is wonderful to hear. And, you know, we know that this is powerful, but the, the challenge is getting people to actually do it. <laughs> so well done for doing it. Well done for doing it. You really are um, setting such a fabulous example. And thank you so much for sharing it. I just want to say the other thing that really helped me was saying the, you know, the Hopopono. Yes. 
please forgive me and hearing me saying it and hearing her saying it really seemed to ramp it up a bit for me anyway very yeah. very good so thank you for sharing that as well as a tip so for those who don't know it um ho'oponopono is a hawaiian uh, methodology you can look it up um and it's actually the ho'oponopono phrase is was is my power phrase for the superpower that's what i used to uh, to get into master um, to, to uh, bring up that feeling, so it's a it's a good one to use. So thank you, Katrina. Yes, because it is very powerful. Fantastic! Yay! Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. All right, and so let's go on to. I don't know who was next online, so I'm just going to go in order that you're on my screen. So Carrie, how are you today? Hi, dear. Hi. Um, how am I doing? I feel like I'm reverting a little bit back. Okay. To the sleepless nights. Right. I'm sorry, my daughter's here. That's okay. Hi, Carrie's daughter. <laughs> Say hi. 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 <laughs> All right. So um, when you uh, are going to sleep, what's happening? So you're going to sleep. Are you still doing the same uh, routine as before? Or have you changed uh, something? Yes, I'm trying to. But um, it's really hard because okay. I'm so tired and like, delirious. Okay. All right. So when you try, when you go to go to sleep, what's actually happening in your mind or physically? What what's stopping you from sleeping? Well, my legs. Right. They okay. get kind of restless. Yeah. Okay. And then it always feels like my neck is either like this or like this. I yeah. I I know that feeling. <laughs> so um. The first thing is that um, are you pre-paving? So during the day, are you thinking about going to sleep and sending love to that, getting into that state and sending love to that? Well, the first time I tried that, which is right after you suggested it, it worked. Okay. But I have been unable to get into that state ever since okay all right so here's what i suggest is go to the recordings uh, if you've got the mp3 recordings mm -hmm. okay so use those to get into the state to get into the superpower state listen to the the mp3 recording recording the latest whatever the latest one was on that page and get allow yourself to get into that state and Fill your body with the, you know, with the light and the and the energy, and then send it to you that night. So pre-paving the sleeping, and then when you get into bed, if you start to feel the restless the restlessness in your legs, just fill yourself with that light. Fill your legs with that light, that love. Because what's physiologically happening is the more you resist that restlessness feeling the more stress chemicals you're putting into your system and the more yes. it perpetuates, right? The more you practice be sending love, the, the lower the levels of stress chemicals, the more the, the feel good chemicals and the less restless you will be. Does that make sense? So it's about keeping those stress chemicals down by choosing where you're focusing the same as everything else. And I know um, uh, Caro said in the, uh, in the chat here, also yoga nidra is really helpful for sleep. I don't know if you've tried that. Um, you could look that up. I don't know it. So you could, you could Google that and see what that's like as well. All right. Thank All right. You. You're welcome, Carrie. And so keep, you know, listen to the, if you can't, if you find you can't get into the state yourself, and this goes for everybody, then use the MP3 recordings to get into the state. Because sometimes it's difficult, you know, depending on how much, how much 
how high the levels of stress chemicals in your system are already. So then use the um, use the, uh, the the MP3s. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie, for sharing that. So keep going Thank and you. reach out to us if you can't. Okay. Good job. All right. And then Cheryl. Hello. How are you today? Good morning. I'm sorry that I was. Oh, I was late and thank you to Lisa for giving me the that's Zoom right. ID. <laughs> ah, that's um, sorry, I was waiting for the email because I'm I didn't realize you had it posted. But oh. um I did first I want to thank Katrina because that was really awesome. Like just seeing her change her entire perception of her mom was really super helpful to me. Um I I was writing my list of things to do yesterday and I wrote down write your letter to mom and then I was like oh just do it now so I forced myself to do that letter um and I, I had mixed feelings as I was doing it because I my mom's got dementia and you know she's just a mess right now so I felt kind of bad about it but then I said no 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 don't feel bad you're the little girl in that and you're going back in time and you have to stick up for yourself. And okay. then and then I had a little still a little hard time starting it. So then I wrote, I don't I didn't like it when you I started off with that. And then Good. boy, it just started flowing out from <laughs> very uh the feelings, like I was so mad. I just remembering the crap that I took and just like, you know, my mother just never protecting me but competing with me all the crazy stuff so it was like four pages of that and then at the end I was like this is terrible I was like well and now when I need you most you have dementia or whatever so I was like oh no that's perfect <laughs> that's perfect I was like how dare you you'll find any excuse not to be there for me that's and um then after I wrote it um I was feeling still a little bad about writing it. So I did rip it up into a million pieces um, and I threw it out. So I hope it still counts, but- um, Absolutely. And then, Absolutely. and then um, I also was like on your, you know, looking at all your, um, your different information and stuff. So I've, I've been following a lot of, um, after doing that, I kind of jumped around because then I went on to your, financial course and I've been doing some work there mm -hmm. so I don't know if I'm if I'm not supposed to do that or if it's okay to do well, that it's absolutely okay yeah okay and then I'm I'm eager to do the um the reframing of the the childhood um and I was starting to practice um you know re rewriting my childhood but I don't, I don't know that much about it. So I'm going to look more into it, but that's where, where I'm working right now. But very, Katrina was, that was really helpful. Very good. Good job, Cheryl. Yes. So thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, with the, um, with the due justice letter, that was perfect. You did that perfectly. And yes, that is what we do is we then tear it up or and throw it away or burn it or whatever so and and you know as whatever however you felt about the you know i understand because your mom's got dementia and that so your conscious mind is feeling those feelings of you know I, it's not so nice to to be speaking this way and that yeah, but, I, I feel bad still a little bit yeah but here's the thing those things were in you anyway these are not things you were just starting to make up now or everything that came out of you on that page, including now that I need you most, you've got dementia and you'll do anything to, you know, to, to not be with me or whatever. All of that was already inside you and it was unconscious. It's not you. It's not like you're consciously saying those things. So what you're doing is you're cleaning that out. You've now cleared out that wound. Now you can start with the unconditional love and changing the memories. Okay, so now you've got all of that haha stuff out, and now you can get into a state of unconditional love, that superpower, and send it to your mom. Love her exactly as she is, regardless of anything else. 
And then, of course, as you say, you'll change the memories. Now, with changing the memories, um, uh, I saw that you'd signed up for the, the financial course. So that's great. And in that course, it'll take you to changing the memories. Okay. So, in that course, um, it will show you how to find the specific memories that are supporting any financial issues, and then it'll take you through changing them. So just okay. keep going through that course, follow along with it. All right, awesome, thank you. You're very, very welcome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Steve's laughing at my use of the word ha ha. <laughs> Wanda, how lovely to have you back. How are Hi. you doing, sweetheart? Thank you. Good. I'm so sorry I came late and um, right. that I haven't been participating in the last week, I think, right? The last week yeah. or the last two I weeks? think it's been a week, yeah. A week, right. So um, I went back to work. It was hectic. My husband has the virus, which is a lot of work to do. Yeah. And uh, so finally today, I said, yeah, I have to make it today. <laughs> Good. So, um uh, I've been listening to all the videos as mm -hmm. I'm doing my chores in the house and at work. I've been listening to it and um, I haven't practiced a lot, but I've been listening to you to go to sleep. And when I oh. wake up in the middle of the night, yes. I just put the recording, um, the, yeah. the one that has the five days, yeah. I listen to that one because I did that whole week. Good. And sometimes I don't even go halfway and I'm already sleeping. Very, very if good. If I wake up again, I put it again. And so your voice is very soothing for me. So I got to see. Yay. Ah, oh, that's good to know. So, um, that's good. I haven't, I don't know about this justice letter. Um, so I don't know if it was yesterday's, I mean, last Friday recording or if it's been, maybe I missed it. I didn't hear it. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if you could explain it again, because I of course yes. maybe I miss it, As even no though I have listened yet. to all the recording, and I've been sharing this recording to people who have mm -hmm. said to me that they have having difficulty or they've been depressed. I think I have shared at least two, three or four of my friends that are going through problems, whether they were sick or they have to take family leave from the job because they couldn't handle the pressure. Right. Um, I work in a hospital, so I have a friend that she had to take family leave because she couldn't handle it oh. uh, listening to all the news and everything that's Absolutely. going on in the hospital yeah so i hope that she use it um so Fantastic. i share with my sister they don't speak a lot of english but i say you know just try it, listen to it oh so, good oh that's, that's wonderful it. that mm -hmm. is really wonderful to hear thank you wonder for sharing mm -hmm. that with us mm -hmm. i'm so proud of you as well i'm so very proud of you thank you and so um and it is lovely to have you back. You've got such a lovely smile. I love having you here. <laughs> I miss and this so, section. It's so, I feel like I am supported in yes. that I'm doing a little bit every day for me, not just like doing, doing for my job, doing, doing for my house and, right. and, and my sick husband and my yeah. son and his girlfriend, they're here. So it's like a lot of cleaning, a lot of cooking, a lot of worrying, a lot of buying medication going outside. Right. But this time it's kind of like for me. Yay. So I'm, so, oh, I'm so glad. Well mm -hmm. done. And I'm, and, and I'm impressed that you are doing it, that you are mm -hmm. making that decision. And, and it's such a great example for, uh, you know, for everybody. We all should be prioritizing um, what feeds our soul and, and ourselves because you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And so you need to look after yourself if you care about those you're, you you know you're, you're looking after so well done and so uh the due justice technique um I'll, I, I can't remember which day we spoke about it so i can easily just uh, go over it now it's um when you are unable to uh, and there's a, a couple of different levels so when you're unable to send love to someone or something for example or you're unable to change the memory so if you're doing the, the childhood memory transformation you you just can't seem to change a memory or you can't seem to let something go so there may be resentment or anger or frustration or hurt or blame or something like that guilt um when you can't manage to do that you write a letter to uh to the person that 
that you have those issues with if if you know who it is and if you don't know you just write it to the universe or you know who to whom it may concern or whatever that so it's a letter you you write that you'll never send and you want to get everything out of you onto that page so you're going to swear and be unreasonable and there's no forgiveness there's no reasoning there's no excuses this person has done whatever and there is no understanding and the reason for that is this is a letter from the child in you so as adults you know we can i, I came across something the other day was talking about um something like a pacifier being taken away for the last time hmm. To an adult, that's just a, well, you don't need it. We've got the brain. We can reason. You don't need it and all of that. To the child, that's a massive thing. This is a big thing. So when we look back on our childhoods, we see, you know, we, we, we see the experiences we had as children through our adult understanding, through our adult eyes. But the problem is the child doesn't see it that way. And that child is still inside us. So when we go, well, I was punished, but you know, I deserved it, or my parents did the best they could, that's great from an adult perspective, from using your logic and your reason from the conscious mind, but the child doesn't get that. And the child is going, I was hurt, I was, you know, threatened, I was hurt, I wasn't safe, um, I didn't get what I needed, and it doesn't matter why. So the purpose of this uh, letter is to get all of that onto the page. No one's ever going to see it. And then once you've got it all out of you, then you tear it up and throw it away or you burn it ceremoniously or however you want to do it. And then you go to sleep. And while you're sleeping, your brain processes the closure. So we call it due justice because it's for that child. It's like justice has finally been done. I finally got justice and finally someone stood up for me. So you are standing up for the little girl. Sorry. So you're not, you're not um, saying the story in writing, but you're just writing your feelings or whatever events. Perhaps. That's right. You're telling them off. So what are you, well, why did you, I, you know, how dare you, you get all, whatever's there, whatever you would say to that person whatever that child in you would say to that person, if they were allowed to, if they had the, the you know, the, the ability to, to do that. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. And the reason it works, so I resisted doing it for a long, long time, because to me, I was like, well, I don't feel that, you know, I don't feel that strongly and I don't know, I don't know what to say. And I don't see how it can work anyway, because, you know, I would want to send the letter to them <laughs> if I'm going to say that I want them to know here's what what made me realize why it works your subconscious doesn't know the difference so your subconscious the child in you will think that those people have heard what you've said and so the child the subconscious thinks that justice has been done because they have now been told off okay all right does that sound good mm -hmm. i will do it Too good much. job very <laughs> good thank you for sharing today and, and one more thing Yes. Uh, when you go to the um, seeing you as a little child and giving you a hug, um, I have tried with uh, different pictures that I have in my mind, but I, I'm stuck with one. Like I feel the most connected with that one picture. That's is great. That, is that okay? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. And there'll be a reason in your subconscious that you're connected particularly with that one. So whatever comes up, that's perfect. If it's a different one each time, that's also okay. If it's the same one, that's okay. So whatever comes up, whatever feels where you feel that connection is perfect. Oh, okay. Thanks. Well done, Wanda. <laughs> Thank you. Bogislava? Quick question. She reminds me about the, the child. When you go and hug the child, I want to ask because most of the time when I do this, I start to cry. Yes. Is that and normal or that's not normal? It's perfectly normal, especially in the beginning. So the reason for that is we didn't get what we should have got as children. Yes. Yeah. And I have that, that feeling. Yeah. That's, that's what's bringing up the tears. And so for a lot of people, 
there's tears. Not for everybody. Different people have different responses. But for a lot of people, for me, there were tears, definitely. Yeah. So it's that release, that, that relief, that poignancy of getting that love and that acknowledgement and that acceptance and that um, value that, that you didn't get as a child. Yeah, so because it's I, a good, feel I was so cute and so good and, and like, I'm wonderful. Like, why they treat me that way? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's wonderful that you are able to feel that for yourself, for that little you. And now do what we call reparenting, which means give that little you what, you should have been given. So the love, the affection, and then also by creating new memories of that little, that cute little you, getting everything she wants, doing what she wants, you know, having these wonderful experiences. So everything that you would have wanted as a child, give that to that child now because your subconscious doesn't know that it's not real. Yes, so how can I do that? Is that like you say, uh, make a new memory so it's like I have pieces forever I change the memories is this or I have to just create completely different story of my childhood so it's both and I'll give you an example of mine one of mine so one of mine uh, I changed specific memories but I also created entire new memories from scratch in other words what so one of them is I'm sitting in bed and it's nighttime, and I've, my parent, my dad left when I was three. That's the real story. But in my new childhood, he's there. My mum is on one side, my dad's on the other side, and they're reading a bedtime story to me. And I'm listening to it, and that lovely feeling of the two of them there, and there's a soft light, and my room is beautiful with all the toys and everything. And then they, I, they tuck me in, they both kiss me goodnight and tell me how much they love me. And they'll see me in the morning and then they go out and they close the door quietly and there's a night light that's left on and then they go downstairs and I can hear them talking and laughing and listening to music as I fall asleep and then I wake up in the morning and I'm excited to get up the sun is coming up I go and look outside I open the curtains and there's the swimming pool because our house now has a swimming pool in my new memory the <laughs> swimming pool and I go downstairs in my bare feet and I can hear them talking in the kitchen. And as I walk in, they both look and they go, oh, there she is, good morning. And they give me a hug. That's a whole new memory from scratch. That's based on not any old memories at all. Does that kind of give you an idea? Yes, completely. Thank you. Great. So you can, you can create as many of those as you like. And the more you do, the more evidence you're giving your subconscious of your worth, your safe, your uh, loved and all of that mm -hmm. does that help yes thank you very good you're very welcome all right i think that's everyone who's on camera so if anyone and i'm going to read lisa lisa um if you put yours in the chat and anyone who's not on camera you can either just unmute yourself and speak anyway or you can um pop it in the chat so uh Love your analogies, Odile. Good. <laughs> and Steve says it's a superpower. Yeah, I, I love analogies. So I'm glad I'm glad you like them too. Um, super awesome, Katrina. April 13th. Ah, oh, thank you, Cheryl. So um, Cheryl says, April 13th, discuss the due justice letter according to my journal entry. So uh, Wanda and anyone else, if you want to uh, check out the, the the recording of April 13th. That's that will have been the due justice. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and oh, Steve says uh, yes. So thank you, Steve. Uh, also in the show notes underneath these later videos, Steve is putting the the topics. So when you go to to the page, you'll see the time of and what we talked about at which time. So that's great. Um, Thank you for asking the question, Bogislava. It gives me the answer why the warm message of Odile sent me, uh, sent to me on Facebook for my little self made me cry a lot yesterday. Ah, yeah. So I'm glad that helped you as well. And then the childhood, Lisa says, the childhood reprogramming is super powerful and changed my life so hugely. Good. That is so wonderful to hear and keep going with it. So keep making it 
even more, you know, even more uh, wonderful. So um, there is no limit to the, uh, the budget and the special effects inside your mind. So thank you for sharing that, Lisa. All right, so I think that's, uh, that's all with the check-in. So um, if we have any targets, any specific targets, uh, you can pop them in the chat. And uh, let's begin with aiming at everyone and everything. <clears throat> all right, so take a deep breath, close your eyes, and go into your superpower state. So using your word or phrase, or by using the exercise, your color and the subject, however you get into your superpower state. Very good. And start feeling your heart expanding. Feel that opening feeling in your heart, in your chest. And imagine that as a ball of light or energy shining out from your heart. And now allow that light or energy to spread down to your toes, up to the top of your head and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy, that love and appreciation. Allow it to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. Love each cell just for existing. Very, very good. And now imagine the little you in front of you, any age, and fill that little you with that love, that light, that energy, that pure, unconditional love. Love that child just for existing exactly as they are. Very good. And now imagine filling your subject with that light, that energy, and imagine they don't want to be with you and keep them filled with that light or energy anyway. Love them anyway. Very, very good. Feel that power. And now let's send that love, that light, that energy to Katrina. Imagine filling her with that light or energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Katrina just for existing. Now I want you to imagine that love or light shining particularly in Katrina's ears and her throat. Fill her ears and her throat with that love, that light, that energy, just for existing, even if, the, even if they don't change. And now imagine her blood circulating, full of that light, that energy, that love, taking that love, transporting that love and light and energy throughout her body and her bloodstream. Love it all just for existing. Very, very good. And now let's go to Bogislava. So filling Bogislava with that same love, light, that energy. Loving Bogislava just for existing. And imagine that love, that light, that energy overflowing from her filling the whole room she's in and then imagine it filling filling her son from the tips of his toes to the top of his head and out to his fingertips wherever he is and whatever he's doing love him anyway exactly as he is just for existing and imagine that love and light forming protective hazmat suit around him in the work that he's doing. Very good. 
And now let's go to Carrie. Fill Carrie with that same love, that light, that energy. Love Carrie just for existing. See that love, that light, that energy filling Carrie from the tips of her toes to the top of her head, out to her fingertips. And now I want you to think of Carrie in bed tonight, going to sleep, and fill that version of Carrie with that same love, that light, that energy. Love her anyway, whether she can sleep or not. See that light or energy filling her legs with that beautiful energy just for existing. Filling her whole body with love. Very, very good. And now let's go to Cheryl. Fill Cheryl with that same love, that light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head, out to her fingertips. Love Cheryl just for existing. Very, very good. And now to Wanda. Let's fill Wanda with that light, that energy, that pure, unconditional love from the tips of her toes to the top of her head, out to her fingertips. Love Wanda just for existing. And now imagine that love, that light, that energy overflowing from Wanda, filling the whole room she's in. Now imagine it filling her husband from the tips of his toes to the top of his head out to his fingertips with that light, that energy. Love him just for existing, exactly as he is. And now imagine Wanda being at work at the hospital and fill her with that love, that light, that energy, that version of her. And imagine that light or energy forming a hazmat suit around her, a protective hazmat suit around her. Pure, unconditional love. Very, very good. And now let's go to Lisa. Fill Lisa with that same love, that light, that energy. Fill her from the tips of her toes to the top of her head out to her fingertips. So she's now full of that light, that energy that's shining out from her. Love Lisa just for existing. Very, very good. And now on to Caro. Fill Caro with that love, that light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head, out to her fingertips. So she's now full of that light, that energy, that love. Love, Caro, just for existing. And now moving on to Cara. Fill Cara with that same love, that light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Shining out from her, love Cara just for existing. Very good. And now the others that are on the call but don't have their cameras on and haven't, uh, haven't said to use their names, so let's send that same love, that light, that energy to all those who are on this call incognito. Fill them with that same love, that light, that energy from the tips of their toes to the top of their head and out to their fingertips. Love them exactly as they are, just for existing. 
very, very good. And now to everyone who's watching this recording, fill them with that same light, that energy, that pure, unconditional love from the tips of their toes to the top of their head, out to their fingertips. Fill them with that same love. Love them just for existing. Very, very good. And now think of yourself later today and send that same light, that energy, that love to that future you, that version of you later today. Fill them with their, from the tips of the toes to the top of the head, out to their fingertips with that light, that energy. Love that version of you no matter what exactly as you are, pure, unconditional love. Very, very good. And you can open your eyes. And how was that for everybody? Good. Very, very good. And so any questions now? That's good. Thank you for the comments. Fantastic. And so any questions before we finish? And of course, make sure you practice this now. Try and stay in the state as much as you can for the rest of the day. And of course, tomorrow morning. Great. I would like to share. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, Wanda, first of all, and then Kara. Yeah, so um, my energy was, um, I send it very powerful to everybody. But yeah. to carry, it was very gentle. Oh. Like if it was like in um, like if you were in a bed with water, like for her, it was like just gentle. Ah, oh, that's Sweet. lovely. Yeah, for the rest, that's... it was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was gentle. <laughs> Very good. So for yeah. Carrie, it was a sleepy version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very, yeah. very good, Wanda. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for doing that. Carrie saying thank you as well. <laughs> You're welcome. Good job. Um, great. Thank you. And uh, Lisa says the light and love was so strong. Yes. And Cheryl says it was. And suddenly I feel so tired. <laughs> yes. Very good. So, um, yes, that was a that was a good, powerful one, I think, for everyone. So that's good. And, um, and of course, keep practicing it, keep doing it. Um, and remember that you can practice on inanimate objects as well. You can do target practice on your coffee mug and a chair and, a, and the fridge and that kind of thing as well, just to keep building those, building that ability and building that, uh, that strength. Carrie? Yes. I think that the secret is to keep yourself filled with the power as everyone else is saying with you. Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you, for, thank you for mentioning that. That's a very good point. So as everyone's aiming at you, you keep yourself filled with that, with that power. Yes. Perfect. And you can also feel your own heart opening to accept the, the love from everyone. That's it. Yes. So, and that's a good point as well, to, to make sure that your heart is open to uh, to accept because accepting love is very often a challenge for many people. So that this exercise is very good for that as well. So thank you for, yes. <clears throat> for clarifying that. Perfect, Carrie. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Love. And so Kara says, uh, microphone not working for some reason. Uh, I'll wait and share tomorrow. Okay. Yes, that's thank you, Kara. I'm sorry about your microphone. We send it love. We love it anyway. We love your microphone anyway. <laughs> and uh, we look forward to hearing from you tomorrow. Uh, I am lovely and warm now. Yes, yes, yes. Many blessings to everyone. Thank you, Katrina. All right. So everybody have a fantastic rest of your day and night. And we will see you same time, same place tomorrow. Uh, lots of love to all of you. Take care. Bye-bye now. <laughs>